Hello friends, I hope that you are having a wonderful day today. My name is Luciano and I make jump chain videos on the internet, as well as videos about any other topics I feel like talking about. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a generic jump by a jump maker that I really like named Edro Grimshell. This is a jump document exploration for the generic culinary warrior jump. Generic culinary warriors are people who have taken their ability to prepare foods and the skills cultivated through their cooking process to be effective warriors. They have a variety of abilities that help them with cooking, and they have a variety of ways that they can use cooking to their advantage, both in battle and outside of battle. This is a generic jump, which means that you can use it to visit a fully original world, or you can use it as part of a way to jump to a setting that is thematically similar. This is something that is quite unique. I don't know of that many settings that would be able to fully capture the vibes of a culinary warrior, but it is also a fantastic idea and it is one of my favorite generic jumps of all time, which is really saying something. I am incredibly fond of generic jumps. Uh, I absolutely adore them and in fact some of my favorite jump chain material ever written has been generic jumps. So when I say that this is one of my favorites, that that really means something. We are going to be talking a lot about this jump in today's video, and I'm so excited to go ahead and get going with that. I have talked about supermarket style jumps before, so you'll be able to see some of the things that I have noted in some of my other supermarket style jumps over here as well, such as the supplement mode and crossover mode and the idea of a portal nexus, which is something I have brought up in past jumps where I've explored supermarket style, uh, especially generic supermarket style jumps. So all of this stuff is fairly standard. You've seen it before. Uh, then moving forward with Origins, you've also seen this before. These jumps are originless, and by default, you are a drop-in who is simply plopped into the world with all of your purchases and all of your abilities, and what you do from there is up to you. But also, like some of these jumps in the past, you are able to choose to have a background that is based off of the purchases that you make here, that will take all of those into account and provide a logical, or at least as logical as possible, and as cohesive as possible, a backstory for you, the jumper. So that way you know things and you have some sort of place in the world from the moment you enter. Whichever one of these is more convenient for you is the one that you can choose. Uh, it does not really make a difference for Edro and for the purpose of using this jump as a jump. Uh, and also, many questions for these kinds of jumps are going to be fan wank as appropriate. Uh, if you've never heard that term, it basically means try to find a way to explain the rules and conditions and set things up in a way that is cohesive for your story. Uh, I just gave a far more technical description of it than you'll probably ever hear, but this is a generic jump. It is not part of some cohesive universe or some sort of singular setting where uh, culinary warriors exist alongside style warriors or exist alongside necromancers. This is a completely original thing, and its utility to your jumper will depend on the sort of story that you're trying to tell, so just keep that in mind when you are getting ready to begin to use this jump in your stories and in your chains. Age and sex don't make much of a difference in the setting, so go ahead and pick whatever you want. And we are going to go ahead and take a glance at the rules of the perk section. Uh, as is the case with many of these jumps, you get culinary tokens. These can be used to get anything you want here for free, including items. Uh, and you get a maximum of two culinary tokens that you can use for 300 choice point perks. There's a number of perks here that cost 300 choice points, which makes this a little bit different from some of Berkus's um, supermarket style jumps where oftentimes everything costs the same price. That is a common trend with Edro Grimshell's generic class supermarket style jumps. There are in fact different tiers to things and you can buy things at various prices. You are able to do all of that kind of stuff and you get a single 50 choice point perk 
for free. You also get a free perk in the form of culinary expertise. Culinary expertise makes it so that you have the equivalent of 10 years of experience when it comes to cooking. This makes it so that you can choose what sort of cuisine you've specialized in, but you're well-rounded enough to cook a wide variety of foods and a wide variety of styles. So this makes it so that you come into this jump knowing how to cook, you have some level of starting experience, and then from there you can further customize all of your stuff based off of the perks and items that you pick. As previously mentioned, Edro has different tiers that uh, the perks here will cost. The 50 choice point perks are all really small things, although they can be quite handy if you want to use them to get a sort of shortcut into gaining experience with a sport or hobby, a craft, a career, or even combat. If your jumper is like a pacifist or someone who never learned how to fight and this is their first jump, just a simple way to give you a nice little shortcut when it comes to learning learning some potentially very handy skills in a jump chain. From here, we have the 100 choice points tier. In Edro Grimshell's generic class jumps, you will often see the 100 choice point tier of perks being things that are universally helpful, but that are flavored in such a way that they will skew towards being skills or applications of skills that are relevant to whatever class you are in in this particular jump. In this particular jump, it's a culinary warrior, so this stuff is going to skew towards health and meal. Um, that said, lots of stuff here is going to be very useful just in general. Presentation is one of my favorite perks in this little section. It makes it so that um, per the amount of effort you put into making something, it will gain a sort of aesthetic booster. It doesn't actually make the thing better in any meaningful way, but it does make it so that it will look better per the more effort you put into it. So if you were trying to create a masterpiece and you worked really hard and you used all of your skills, you're going to create something that looks fantastic. This doesn't mean that it's going to taste really good. It doesn't mean that it's going to cut really good if it's a weapon or something like that, but it does mean that you will have an excellent first impression. This also makes it so that you know how to present yourself more effectively. So if you want to come across as a wise scholar, you know how to give that impression. If you want to come across as an actor, you know how to give that impression. If you want to come across as goofy, you know how to give that impression, that kind of stuff. So from here, we are able to go ahead and take a look at some of the other perks at this tier. Um, one of the fun other perks of this tier, keep your tools working, makes it so that you know how to keep your tools maintained and in ideal condition. It takes longer for the tools you use to need maintenance, and you have a sense for when the best time is to actually sit down and perform the needed maintenance. After this, there is get out of the kitchen, which is a very fun perk if you are an adventurer. Even if you have a little bit of experience with adventuring or you're jumping has a little bit of experience with jumping with adventuring this can be a very handy perk this makes it so that you have all of the outdoorsy skills needed to survive out in the wild um, and makes it so that you're very good at improvising a kitchen out in the field using just what's available in nature which can help you set up a comfortable camping environment even in harsh conditions as you can see this could be very handy this could make you incredibly useful in an adventuring party because in an adventuring party it's not just enough to be good at fighting monsters it you have to have basic survival skills that help you get away with being out in the wild from here, we can go ahead and start to take a look at some of the more powerful perks. Um, some of the fun ones over here that are a little bit more specific for cooks and for cooking warriors are things like Tenderizer, which allows you to use the ability, uh, which allows you to use your knowledge of anatomy to strike at pressure points that can and will cause pain. And also you can use this to boost yourself or others to a similar degree. This also makes it so that you're better at working with hard or tough materials in general and makes it so that the things you cook can become much more tender and easy to consume. So rather than having to wor worry about a cold or hard meal, cracking your teeth or doing something like that, you can make things nice and easy to eat. Just a very fun set of abilities to have. 
From here, the 200 choice point perks that people should take a look at are basically all of them. My real purpose here is getting you to, uh, whether you pause the video now or you um, wait until the video is over and you go take a look at it yourself, I'm really hoping that you go take a look at this jump document. But really, all of the 200 choice point perks are really fun. Some of my personal favorites are ones like Icebox and Can't Stand the Heat, which makes it so that you are able to survive and be comfortable in a wider array of environments with less effort on your part, making it so that you can do more sorts of adventures. There's also It's Filling, which is an incredible perk. It makes it so that you are able to lengthen the effects of empowerments that have durations um, by an order of magnitude without diluting their potency. So this means that if someone were to cast a spell, that gives you a healing factor that in D&D terms gives you five hit points every minute and lasts for five minutes, you would instead be able to use that and you would be able to regain those same number of hit points for... 50 minutes instead of for 5 minutes, or for 100 minutes instead of for 10 minutes. This also reduces the cost to maintain an effect by an equal amount, making it cost a tenth of the cost to keep a spell or effect going, and makes it so that you only need a tenth of the food that someone else would need to survive. Just a very fun ability. Uh, another really cool ability is Iron Chef, which makes it so that your skill in cooking is now linked to your skill in combat. So the better of a cook you are, the more experienced of a cook you are, the better of a fighter you are, and the better of a fighter you are, the better of a cook you are. So if you were to go to a jump where you were a gladiator for 10 years, and all you did was fight and wage battles, and you got more experience with battles, then you would be a better cook thanks to this perk. There's a number of these perks across Ed Rose generic jumps, including one in generic healer, which has not come out yet, at least not as of the time that I'm recording this video. I'm hoping that by the time I release it, it will have, but Ed Rose still working on the items. I'm super stoked for that. I absolutely love healers. Just a very fun thing for me. Watching that jump come to life has really made my day whenever I've seen new progress on it. Uh, another ability here that is very fun is hits the spots. This is a sort of reverse of one of the perks that we mentioned earlier. It makes it so that you have the ability to empower the effects of any empowerment placed on you with a duration by a factor of five without reducing the duration. So effectively, if you got hit by a spell that causes you to recover seven hit points every five seconds, you would be able to get 35 hit points every five seconds instead of the original seven. And this doesn't reduce the duration of the spell. This also allows you to maintain the effects of any empowerment placed on you with your own energy. So if someone were to hit you with the sort of healing factor spell that I mentioned earlier, you would be able to expend your own energy to keep that effect going. And healing effects are also affected by this multiplier, making them significantly more effective. This is one of a set of perks that is really just kind of a must grab in this jump. If your jumper is an adventurer, uh, it's unfortunate that there, at least to the best of my knowledge, isn't really a way for you to take these effects and put them into other people. Although if you have some sort of perk sharing thing, you definitely can do that. Uh, if you have enough magic that you can take your own own internal effects and you can place them in other people you can do that but still just a really fun thing second serving is also part of that set of perks that I was just mentioning and it makes it so that you have the ability to cause a spell buff potion or other beneficial effect to trigger on you a second time so long as the first instance of that effect happened within the last 24 hours so if you were able to drink a potion that made you fire immune and the effect lasted for five minutes, as long as you drank it in the last 24 hours, you would be able to willingly trigger a second instance of that without drinking a second potion. This also gives you a second wind type ability like D&D fighters have, which is where you can just sort of force your own wounds to seal and restore some of your health and energy, and you can do that once per short rest. I don't quite remember how it works in 5e. It's probably once per short or a long rest, but this is just a more effective version of that. Very fun. 
The final tier of perks in this particular jump are the 300 choice point perks, and these ones are real nice and beefy. All right, so as previously mentioned, you can use tokens to buy 300 choice points, perks, and items. Uh, however, you can only use them to buy two, two uh, you can only use them to buy two 300 choice point perks. So if you want to buy superfoods, arcane cuisine, and you are what you eat, you can use tokens on two of those and you have to spend actual points once you hit the third one. Now you can decide that order and there are some 300 choice point perks in this particular jump that you can't buy with that. But still, this is the capstone perk. These items, these perks and items are really strong. Um, I will go ahead and talk about some of them just so that way you can get an idea of what they're like. You are what you eat makes it so that you're able to replicate the features and abilities of the things you've eaten in some fashion. You can temporarily manifest physical characteristics of anything you've eaten within the last 24 hours, although training allows you to get better with this, uh, which is exaggerated by the supernatural nature of this process. For example, uh, if you really wanted to, you could use this to replicate a phoenix in some way, replicate a phoenix's feathers or a phoenix's tears, and you could use those to accelerate the healing of another person if you've eaten a phoenix. Um, you can also, now with supernatural things, it's a little bit trickier to do than that. The examples here are mundane examples, such as the lion's head, which would allow you to roar with concussive force. Think of it as a roar that creates a shock wave that sends people around you tumbling back or stuns them, that kind of thing. Fast food is another one of the capstone perks over here. This makes it so that so long as you have all of the ingredients or materials to make something, you can fuse them together and uh, turn them into a finished product in only a few moments. The quality of this finished product will be less than your best efforts, but will take your skills and the quality of the ingredients used in its creation into account. This works for anything you want to create, not just food, which is very important. So you could use this to create a sword if you had all of the proper raw materials. You could use it to create a potion if you had all of the stuff, even if you didn't have the actual physical tools that you needed to make something a potion, so long as you have the ingredients. This is honestly just a really kick-ass ability. It is one of the most convenient abilities from this jump, although uh, I don't know if I would classify it as the best. Spirit of the Kitchen is another extremely fun one. This makes it so that you can feed any meal you create to anything. Feeding something a uh, meal in this way can improve upon it. Um, and this also makes it so that you don't have to worry about things like allergies and stuff like that. And you don't have to worry about something being incompatible with something. So if you want to use this to have a vampire feed on lettuce, you could do that. Uh, the Now, obviously, how effective that would be depends on a number of factors, including your skill and the intention behind what you were doing. But remember that feeding something a meal this way improves it somehow. However, how it improves it depends on, again, a number of factors. I personally think Spirit of the Kitchen is my favorite perk in this particular jump. It is just really, really good. Uh, from here, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual two capstone perks that are unique, the two that you cannot use tokens to get, Cannibal Connoisseur. This particular perk is very fun. It makes it so that when you eat something, you are able to draw out the memory skills and instincts, as well as muscle memories of a being through eating them in some particular way. Now, how strong this is depends on how much of the thing that you're eating and also how much of, like... Uh, how much of it you have worked on, some kinds of stuff like that. There's a number of factors over here, and you do not gain the full benefits of this right away. You have to work to integrate these skills and knowledge and abilities, um, but this is still a really cool perk. This is actually something that uh, one of my game masters, Philosophy, used over in one of their settings that I'm in over in the shift version over into Mondo, one of the villains had an ability that was extremely like this. And in fact, multiple characters have an ability that is some sort of version of this, which is one of the reasons why I'm so fond of it. I think it's really neat. Um, Fusion Cuisine allows you to take 
things and fuse them. Specifically, it allows you to combine any two perks, powers, or abilities to create a new effect. You can choose how these things combine, but once they've fused together, they cannot be unfused until the end of the current jump. A perk in a fusion cannot be used in another fusion. You cannot fuse your base stats, but you can combine this perk with other perks if you so want. And this is another really interesting ability. I feel like using this one really effectively is difficult and requires a lot of intelligence and a lot of big brainness that I often feel like I don't have. But this is still an extremely fun ability, and it's something that I strongly recommend that people with bigger brains than me use. Uh, part of the reason I am a little bit weary about using it in my own chains is not only how much it costs and the fact that you can't use a culinary token to gain it, but also the way that it makes the fusions permanent, at least for the duration of the jump. That would make me a little bit uh, more off put by it, but it's still really fun. So from here, we are able to go ahead and grab the items. Um, there are a number of items here that have a number of different tiers. You also gain two additional culinary tokens that can only be used here, which allows you to, which ensures that you can gain some items effectively. There are two free items. There is kitchen essentials and there is a place in the world. A place in the world is... It's almost kind of an anti-drop-in ability. Uh, it makes it so that you always have a place in history and things. Uh, it's not quite an item, but it's not a perk either, although it does come in tiers. Kitchen Essentials is an infinite supply of a decent amount of different cooking things that people will always need, including a small selection of pots, pans, and basic utensils of all right quality. From here, we're able to look at the actual items. The 100 choice point items are, for the most part, uh, things that allow you to get a small collection of food that you can use to make different meals. Um, not all of them are like this. Kitchen space isn't like this, and brewery isn't quite like this. But for the most part, you use these, so that way you always have some sort of food on hand, some sort of food that you're able to call upon. Um, and also these things restock weekly and they will have random amounts of different goods that are related to the kinds of foods that they come with, the kinds of foods that they're associated with. Of these, my personal favorite is the meat locker and then the cornucopia. Um, my favorite item in this entire jump and one of my favorite items ever is the first uh, only 200 choice point item, as in the first item that doesn't have a variable cost and costs 200 choice points, Traveling Tavern. I absolutely love items like this, and I've told that to Edro in various comments and various posts that I've made. Uh, this is a decently sized carriage that can be drawn by a single horse, which will be provided with the carriage. Uh, it is, the horse is summonable and phantasmal in nature and can respawn and can be summoned without the cart should the need arise. But the actual key here is the carriage itself. The door in the back of the carriage leads to a much larger interior than the outside would suggest. A full tavern complete with a simple simple kitchen and sleeping quarters for 20 people with comfortable beds, as well as a serving area that can easily seat up to a few dozen people comfortably. This makes it so that you are the owner of a traveling business, a traveling tavern. There are so many fun applications of this item. It is just genuinely one of my favorite items of any sort, especially in a medieval or fantasy setting. The idea that you would be able to go over like long stretches of highway and long stretches of roads that connect to distant towns, but still have all the comforts of home, including a kitchen that you can use, and the ability to ferry people back and forth is just so much fun to me. That is the sort of thing that I think about and that I could just use forever. It's fantastic. From here, there's other really cool items in the 200 choice points tier as well. Support staff is uh, 10 simplistic homunculi or little golem people that will perform culinary tasks as if they were extensions of you, even allowing you to see, smell, and taste through them. Unfortunately, they're nearly useless in a fight and have no will of their own, but running them takes no focus from you as they have their own streams of thought that you tap into while they're active. They can't stray too far from you, only around 25 meters or they fall dormant, and if you don't return to them or if they don't find some way back to you somehow, they will re reappear in your warehouse or in another property that you own within 24 hours. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can also allow others to use the homunculi if you, uh, if you want, and you can revoke those permissions at, well, at will. 
So from here, we are able to go ahead and hop on over to the 300 choice point items. There's three such items. Well, actually, let me check. Uh, yes, there's three such items. Very glad that I double checked, but even if I didn't find it necessary, there's secret ingredients, which is a magical ingredient that you can add to any meal or dish while it's being cooked to improve it in every way. There's Blade of Hearthstone, which is a living blade that eats things. Effectively, uh, as you use it to fight people and as you feed it things, and as it takes lives, it grows in some way. It gains permanent increases in its power and even manifests unique traits based off of the people that it kills. The consumed magic and vitality is stored in the weapon and can be used by the wielder. Or it can be used um, by the weapon itself, although that sort of thing probably requires some sort of outside of context things. Generic Enchanter probably has stuff for that. The Cookbook is an item that I have mentioned in past jumps about supermarket style jumps like this that allows you to share the abilities that you get from this jump document with others. These items always operate a little bit differently and they're always flavored a little differently, but basically there's two modes of use for it. You can share it with someone and let them read it, which will allow them to develop a small number of abilities from this jump. Or you can will the book to disintegrate and it will spread its essence across the setting and will allow various people from throughout the setting to benefit from the effects of reading the book. If you do this, you get a new one at the start of your next jump. Now, some of these items occasionally have more uses than just this, but this is one of the simpler ones. It's also one of the more handy ones. I think that this is an ability set that you can share with other people without worrying about the abilities being incredibly broken. It would take someone developing something like the effects of multiple 300 choice points abilities for them to really become some sort of large menace, or it would take them a long amount of time to really cultivate the abilities that some of these things grant before they become a serious problem. That said, um, especially compared to some other jumps like generic necromancer or generic bard where the abilities are a little bit more directly wild and unfettered so i personally think that someone could use this in a bunch of different ways and it not be quite as dangerous but still i wouldn't actually recommend that you disintegrate the book and that you spread its effects around uh, i never really recommend that because you don't have control over who the over who gets the abilities and you wouldn't want to grant your your enemies some of these powers still uh, from here there is a companion section this is pretty standard companion stuff although it's actually a little interesting that if you create a custom companion they get 800 choice points and the full five culinary tokens to spend so a budget that is almost the same as yours I think that's really cool, especially for the actual cost, only 50 choice points. From here, you get to see drawbacks. There are a bunch of drawbacks, although uh, how effective they are really differs from jump to jump. Um, as usual, you can apply other drawbacks using something like the universal drawback supplements, or you can use custom created other supplements that have lists of custom drawbacks. I myself have a list of custom drawbacks for anyone who is curious and anyone who loves likes attaching drawbacks to things. It's over in my drive for anyone who wants to take a look at, at that. And then over here, there is a notes page which talks about some of the rule sets here and some of the inspirations. I really like this. I think that this is a fantastic jump. I also think that this is a good early jump, and I think that it's a lot of fun for someone who has companions and wants to help their companions get used to jumping, because this setting, unless you really heap on the drawbacks, is not going to be wildly dangerous. So that's just a little fun thing. This is just a neat little setting that you can visit. Uh, it's not quite as potentially dangerous, at least not without some sort of galaxy brain, as something like Generic Necromancer, uh, which is definitely a jump that we are going to take a look at together. Generic Necromancer is fantastic. I really like it. I really like all of Ed Rowe's uh, generic class jumps, but that one just hits different. It's very special to me. That said, we are going to go ahead and end today's video here. I hope that you enjoyed watching this overview, and I can't wait to talk to you about other videos in the near future. Bye-bye, everyone.